So let's get to some of these questions that were asked of you. Um, let's see. Gary McVeigh wants to know, how do you feel about what Don King said when introing Don, Donald Trump? <clears throat> uh, Rick Ross uh, had a, a line in one of his, uh, <laughs> his raps, and it basically was like, he's finished. Don right. King is finished. But Don King is like, yeah, it's like, I, I just want to know where the hell did that come from? Like the dude is, I mean, what is he, 80 something years old? He's a, he's damn near a billionaire. He don't need Donald Trump money. What the hell is he doing? Hey man, do you know everybody wants to be famous now? He's not in the spot like, like he used to be. Can you imagine as you get older, he has to remind uh, the bitches that he still try to suck because he ain't fucking shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he has to remind them that he's Don King. Like when he walk up to girls now, these young girls don't know no goddamn Don King. He gotta be mm -hmm. like, I'm Don King. Let me show you who I am. He can go back to some videos or something. <laughs> he, he going through that transition of not being relevant no more. So he will go up there and do some sucker shit. Cause you know he's highly intelligent. Right. He know that's some sucker shit. Right. But he'll go up there and do it so he can have some relevancy. Mm -hmm. I hope you get some um, pussy that you can um, view. Cause you ain't fucking it no more, I can tell. All right, so DZ took too many white pills. DZ Threat says, "What's the worst choice that you've ever made in life?" Um, uh, I don't know, man. It's, that's hard for me to that's hard for me to answer because I stand on the shit I did, even with my my my, my uh, daughter's mother. She's a lousy bitch, but. <laughs> That's who I used to fuck with. I was a young man, I didn't know. I tell all young men, once you recognize that it's a lousy bitch, get the fuck away from him. But I didn't, I didn't get away in time. I now, now, how, now how are you gonna answer, ask, answer this, your daughter when you, she sees this video when she gets older and you're my, calling her mama a lousy bitch? My daughter know her mama a lousy <laughs> bitch. She a lousy, funky, hater hoe. <laughs> And my daughter is, know this. Oh. My daughter is um, 23, 20, <laughs> okay. and she's doing well. My daughter right. is, you know, she's going to school to get her master's now. She, she's, my daughter is like me, even though her mother take credit for it, but ain't nobody in their family done nothing like that. I, right. told, I told her, I was like, my daughter is going to be the best thing to ever happen to you. Now my daughter has a good job, even though she's, still in school, and she basically has to take care of her sisters, and I mean her sister and her sister child, because the sister, her sister act like the mama, mm -hmm. and had a baby young. I knew she was gonna have a baby young when she was a baby. <laughs> I think she was about two years old, and one day she looked at me like, I was like, oh, that bitch gonna be out here. Girl. <laughs> they gonna be oh, dicking the fuck out of her. I'm here to tell you, right? <laughs> I knew the West Side was gonna be. Okay, look, look, man. Jumping in that Say, man, moving okay. on, man. Right. Uh, Omar Jones says, would I be wrong for standing outside of abortion clinic with RIP fetus gear for sale? That sounds like one of your 5150. It is. You know what I'm saying? Look, let me tell you something. A lot of women are going to be shocked and they not go buy it, but you might save a baby life. That might make a girl go, oh, I can't go through with it. So go out there, embarrass them bitches at the clinic and tell them to stop killing them babies because it's convenient. Even though, if guys be honest, we'd be so glad some of them bitches didn't have them babies. Boy, I'm so, hey, bitch in Cleveland, I'm so glad you didn't keep that baby. I don't know what I would've did, bitch. I would've had to murder your ass. <laughs> I would've let the baby make it and then got you, though. That's what I do, I don't murder the baby. I abort bitches. Say, man, oh. that joke you told, man, when you said, uh, when they go into the room with the doctor, you said, <laughs> one of them, I ain't taking but one back home with me, man. Pick your choice. Right. <laughs> I used to have jokes about if they had a microphone in the bitch womb, goddammit, you, <laughs> you'll hit a baby in there. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Say, I know it's your <laughs> life, but it's something for you to think about. <laughs> Keenan Mary says, Are you having a third season of Black Jesus? I think they're going to allow us to have another season of Black Jesus. We should have been filmed the third season, but uh, you know you have to understand it's an urban show, and we did great numbers. And my opinion is um, there are people in power who do things to try to throw off the momentum of that show. But 
if the show makes it a third season, people are going to watch it. You know, man, let's, let's go in on Hollywood real quick. <clears throat> you know, that pissed me off too, man, because when you have other shows, man, especially when, when, when you're talking about white folks, yeah. when you have shows that where that primary audience is white, you know, or white stars, you have white stars on the show, man, they fucking never have to go through shit like that. The show is automatically re renewed. It's, it, in fact, once they know it's a hit in the middle of the season, it's renewed after, after three, four episodes, they're already renewing and, and, and putting, in, putting in new contracts. Absolutely. But they will take a black, sh they will take a successful black show off the air like it ain't nothing. They'll never give it a chance. Yeah, they do it all the time. And uh, fortunately for us, we had a chance and that, that, sh that first season we were on, the only time we lost in the ratings was the first night Thursday night football came on. Mm -hmm. We up against NFL football. That's the only one that beat us that Thursday night. Uh, so we had we, we got a lot of people who like that show, and it is exactly what you said. I don't care who gets mad at me. You guys make some type of maze for us to go through, mm -hmm. and it's not fair. You and it's, all, it's, all, it's already like... Man, it's, you gotta go through hell just to get a show green lighted in the first place. Yeah, I mean, you got damn green light. You gotta go through hell just to get a pilot done. TV you is know? very hard to make it where the show actually hits the air. It's yeah. a whole bunch of steps that the entertainers have no control over. So I believe that they're gonna allow. You understand? You hear me? They're gonna allow Black Jesus to have another. Season. But that, that's some cold blooded shit, though, man. Well, we should have got to hit. You got to hit show, man, and you got to jump through hoops. We should have hit show. Take the Thursday. You got to go through. You got to jump through hoops to get get to get uh, a new season. You got to go jump through hoops to get your money. You know, like when you when you look at the ratings, you compare ratings. When you compare apples to apples, and this guy has a hit show, or even his show may not even be a hit, but he's making. You know, three hundred thousand dollars an episode, and you you sitting on a hit show, and you the star, and can't even get three hundred thousand dollars. Can you believe Martin never won no awards or anything? And you know how many people watch that show. Right. I ain't just got to say the black people that watch right. the show. That show was a hit. People were right. watching that show. Martin Lawrence, when he used to do movies, his movies was number one when they were in the theater. Them shows, that, that shit never won an award for nothing. But they'll give a show like uh, Third Rock from the Sun and all this sucker shit awards. And right. you be like, what the fuck? But I know what it is. You know what it is. And I honestly think the people know what it is. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, and then, then they'll have shows on air like Martin Family where they're going to shove it down your throat. Like when that show first came on, it, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, it didn't have, like, it didn't, it wasn't a ra ratings bonanza. It, it didn't come out the, out the gate swinging, but they kept on running and running and shoving down your throat to where, you know, it's palatable now, you know, like as, as far as like for, for the audience that it attracts. I mean, I, don't, I still don't, I wouldn't watch it. If you shove you know? shit down people's throat, eventually they'll get used to it. Yeah. You know that, right? That's right. with anything. Right. So they shove that moist shit. Yeah. I call it moist shit. Right. They shove it down people's throat, and eventually people start watching moist shit because that's what it is to watch. Right. If you give people clean water, they'll drink clean water. If you give people dirty water, after a while, they'll start drinking that shit. Right. Okay, so Lynn Sutton says, rank your top five coons in the entertainment and sports world. I mean, it's, 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 there's so many. It's hard, there's man. There's so many coons, but I, I rank them by the guys who have the most access to the people. Mm -hmm. That's why I always talk about Stephen A. Smith, because he's on a network where a lot of people watch it, and his show is watched by a lot of people. And a lot of us are embarrassed by the things he say, but we have no word on what he say. Mm -hmm. It's not like we can go over there and judge what he said. But I put him as number one, but their show is dying now because... Uh, they got another show on Fox called Undisputed, and Shannon Sharp. Shannon Sharp killing him. He's killing him because he has the uh, 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 one of the words that the minister said, testicular fortitude. Okay. He, he's bold enough to speak more from the heart right. than a Stephen A. Smith. So eventually, that whole audience that uh, was watching ESPN is going to draw toward this guy because if you watch what he's saying. He's a, he's a boy from Georgia, and he's got 
the nuts to at least speak from the heart. Stephen A doesn't speak from the heart. In fact, that mm -hmm. other guy who's on the show with him is so much smarter than him, he's making him look stupid. Skip Bayless used to kind of like pity Stephen A. Well, they don't a. have that show, show anymore. What? They, they don't have Skip Bayless and uh, Shannon Sharp? No, what's his name? Right. No, Skip Bayless left and went to Fox mm -hmm. with um, Shannon Sharp to do a show. Mm -hmm. Now they have um, Coon A. Stephen Smith uh, on there with this guy named Max Kellerman. Right, Max, Max is a hell of a dude. He's he, sharp. He's so much smarter yeah. than Stephen A. All Stephen A. does is interrupt him and yell over him the whole show. Mm -hmm. If you really just watch, just watch the show because Max Kellerman, a white guy. This guy, he knows about sports. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's got that knowledge and everything. When, Skip Bayless used to pity Stephen A. He used to try to let Stephen A win. This guy, Max Kellerman, I'm not saying he's out to get Stephen A, but he's sitting here speaking, using his intelligence to destroy Stephen A. All Stephen no, A. Max, Max Kellerman is, is the real deal. Him. You know Max no, Kellerman? Yeah, I know. He's a, re he's a real deal. I, I, a real I never deal. met him, but I watch people. Yeah. He's a smart guy. Yeah. He also got in trouble for saying something and, on, and on he, ESPN. And about, he's been that way for a long time. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I see it. When he talks, yeah. I see it. So, Stephen A., I want to let you know, you look stupid than a motherfucker trying to have a conversation with this dude just yelling and all that cooning and all that stuff you do. I want Stephen A., I want you to call your mama and tell her, I said, bitch, you fucked up. <laughs> okay? Your mama fucked up. She raised the coon. <laughs> Jermaine West wants to know how you feel about police brutality and the Black Lives Matter impact. Um, it's obvious that um, everybody is scared to say what's really happening. When people have the spotlight to talk about what's happening with the police brutality, nobody says, as long as Caucasian people have the power over us, they're going to murder us. This is the history of Caucasian people in America. As long as there are Caucasian cops who have the power to shoot other races of people, especially black people, this is not something you're going to fix by marching. Mm -hmm. I know that's some scary shit to say. How do you fix it? Man, listen, if somebody shoots you, how you fix that? Well, well, if somebody shoots your shoot father, at how me. you fix that? They shoot at Okay. Somebody shot your father. How do you fix that? If somebody shoot my father? Yeah. Well. How do you fix that? Okay, so let, let me let me. <laughs> I know you don't like. It's, it's uncomfortable to tell the truth. Well, you know, and say what well, it is. No, no, well, here's the thing. You know, I mean, I mean, these motherfuckers is watching us like we watching them. You dig what I'm saying? If so, somebody shoots but, your brother, how but, do you but, fix but, that? but the thing is, is that I'm a vengeful motherfucker. So figure it out. You know what I mean? And I believe you yeah. when you say that. Yeah. So so so, so and I, I'm not I'm not the type of dude who gonna accept you know any type of disrespect. I'm not gonna accept any type of violation. Uh, toward me, period. I believe it. I see it in you your know? eyes. Look yeah. how they dilate now. Cause yeah. you, you, yeah. you meditated on that shit. It made yeah. you mad. Yeah. And, and when I watch television and I see innocent people murdered, like what's happening recently in Tulsa, Oklahoma, uh, uh, in, in North Carolina, Charlotte, uh, yeah. in, in Minnesota, where that guy was in the car with his family. Uh, they pulled over the lady who was driving and the passenger wound up getting murdered. Yeah. Four shots fired in the car with a four-year-old in the back. Listen, Caucasian cops do not care about us. Mm -hmm. Somebody needs to say that. I'm not saying all Caucasian, all Caucasian cops, mm -hmm. all Caucasian. It's insane to say one whole race of people is evil. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is, as long as they have the power over us, they're going to murder us. That's what they do. Right. They need to make a Geico commercial about it. That's what they do. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So the the I mean, you got a, you got a hell of a point, man. The thing is that you know people want to believe that that's not the case. People want to believe that one day we'll get to a point to where they're just going to start treating people fairly and equal and all this stuff. They think they can prey on it. They think that somehow, it's still people out there think, hey man, we just gonna pray on you this You just gotta shit. vote. We got to vote, we got to pray on this, we got to pray, but more importantly, pray. We got to pray like grandmama did, and grandmama before her did, and great, 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 great,
has its place. I believe that donations have their place. I do believe that uh, I, I believe that somebody blogging is a is a place for people who blog and people who you know there's a place for comedians who are sincere about it and will speak out. There's a place for artists. There's a place also for fucking fighters. You know because let me tell you something. One thing that I do know about I I know about bullies. Bullies you cannot speak logic to bullies. Bullies have to be bullied. They, they, they don't understand anything, any other language. They, they just, if you start trying to talk to a bully, wait, 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 stop. Stop. Right. Stop. Don't, don't. Right. Stop. 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 That's what's going to happen. They, they bullies, they, they're bullies for a reason. Yeah. So, in my experience, all my life, all the times I've ever dealt with bullies, the way I got them off my ass is I bullied them back. I put something on their asses. That's what I did. And it always worked. I mean, when I say it worked, I'm talking about this shit worked 100% of the time it worked. Now, because law enforcement in America are so arrogant and they got so much juice, they got so much latitude about what they can do and get away with it, and get away with, uh, many of them will be resistant. If you try to fight back, they're going to be resistant initially. They might even try to get down for a whole year, maybe two, but sooner or later, the motherfucker gonna get tired of taking losses. They gonna get tired, and they gonna be like, okay. So this is something that could have been avoided from Jump Street. This is something that could have been set down. These people could have sat down and talk, talked about it from day one, but no, they wanted to get all the way out of hand, and they wanted to just see how far, we want to keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. We want to see what you niggas gonna do. Just Google uh, the American government buying bullets. Just Google that. Hmm. They are trying to initiate a war by being bold. Mm -hmm. They wanted to jump off. I mean, when you shoot people who got their hands in the air, uh, one guy got shot, he laying on the ground with his hands down. That, that's, yeah, that, that they, one right there. They're daring you yeah. to do something. Yeah. And these cell phones that we use are part of their weaponry because just because you ain't looking in this motherfucker. Don't mean that they ain't looking at you. It's a camera in this motherfucker. Right. And they are looking at you while you sleep and everything because they can do that with these phones. Right. I'm here to tell you, man. And the reason they do that is because they know. They have to know what's happening in case there is a group of people who's smart enough to rise up against them. That movie 300, it was a movie. But let me tell you something. If you had 300 snipers, you could change government in mm -hmm. America if they right. were organized. True. You know what I'm saying? True. And that's the thing that they're not going to let happen. They're not going to let you get organized to come up with a way to stop what they are doing. Because the men in power, if they're the target, then it can change the course of how things are going in America. But nobody is organized enough to go after them. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we march and you know what I'm saying? The people out in uh in Charlotte and I, oh my God, I'm with you. My heart is with you. They're standing outside trying to get a videotape released of what happened to that brother who was murdered in Charlotte. But we all know what happened. He was shot by a police officer who knew nothing was gonna happen to him. Right. That story about we could go back to Mike Brown. It was so crazy when you tell me somebody ran up on the police and tried to take their gun. Who, right. who, who does that? Nobody does that. Right. But that's the story they went with, and they ran it through the system because the people in the system, they're the friends of the police. They're their allies. Mm -hmm. You're not gonna get justice in this country with the way things are going right now. Yeah. If you march, you'll just bring attention to it. But they want you to bring attention to it because they really want to almost have basically like a cleansing in this nation, if you ask me. I know, this shit, the way it's happening, you know it's gonna go bad one day, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just a well, matter of time. It's gonna get worse, it's already bad. Yeah, it's, it's just a matter worse. of time before those yeah. marchers are joined by people who are ready to do something, like the brother in Dallas, mm -hmm. who shot at the police. You know what I'm saying? He was by himself, unfortunately. <laughs> he was by himself, so. I'm not saying the police that are out there who were killed are bad guys, because I don't know them. But I know my experience with the police as a black man is unpleasant. When that man in Tulsa, Oklahoma was walking to the car with his hands up, 
I didn't have the police tell me walk to the car just like that. You don't hear any audio. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you don't know what was happening. They murdered him. Man, let's continue this discussion when we come back. <laughs> Checking out Willie D Live. Fuck the police. <laughs>